All right, good morning everyone. It's Anna here. As you can see, I'm doing this um, slightly differently today. Um, I said to you I was going to make a video on insulin resistance. I've been saying that now for I don't know how long. Um, so I've got myself set up today to do um, it on my whiteboard. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit confusing because I think the um, video makes everything go a little bit back to front. So I'm going to try to well, I'm going to hopefully not confuse you guys too much, but please just bear with if things come up a little bit um, the wrong way around. And um, I'm obviously going to go over there to do the video, but if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'll come and check in on the comments box. Um, so somebody asked me the other day to talk a little bit more about insulin resistance, and I um, I said that I would do it. It was actually such a massive topic, and um, that's why I wanted to have the whiteboard so I don't completely overwhelm you with too much information. So I'm just going to kind of go through things a little bit with you guys, um, because this is something really important we want to know for weight loss and for health in general. Last week, I talked a little bit about this concept of flexibility for health. And we looked at this idea of the immune system, we looked at this idea of the metabolic system um, and the cognitive system. And I talked a little bit about how flexibility between these different systems is um, really important for health. And so when we're looking at insulin resistance, this is the main, this is the main metabolic system that we want to have flexibility in um, so that we can be healthy and lose weight, but it also has such a big knock-on effect um, to health as a whole. So I'm going to go over here now. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, but essentially when we're having sugar coming into the bloodstream, what we've got is glucose, which is coming from our carbohydrate foods. And um, that's going to get digested in the stomach. It's going to go into our bloodstream and it's then going to be absorbed from the bloodstream. It needs to go somewhere and it's probably going to go into some cells. And this could be muscle cells because we've got muscle glycogen and we want to have sugar in our muscle cells so we can exercise and do stuff. Or it could be liver cells um, where we, we store glucose so that we can use it um, for later. So we get the sugar, it goes into our bloodstream, it goes into these cells, and that depends on having good, strong, healthy cell receptor sites. Now, when if we eat a lot of this and we have a lot in the bloodstream, our cells are going to get full pretty quickly, and then we're going to want to take that sugar across to the liver. Da, 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 da. Now, when the liver gets full, what do we do? Because we can store about, you know, somebody who's got great glycogen stores can probably store a maximum of 800 grams of carbohydrates in their cells, muscle cells. And then somebody who has got, um, then we can store about 150 grams in our liver. But once these cells are full and our liver is full, then what do we do? Good morning, Georgie. I can just see your comment there on the screen. So then we've got to do something, which is we have to actually convert this sugar to fat. And when we convert the sugar to fat, where does it go? It goes into our belly. So we've got Sugar stores in the muscle getting filled up, sugar stores in the liver getting filled up, that sugar needs to go somewhere, we make it fat, we take it to our belly. And then when we get to the belly, what happens is, you know, if you are in um, a sort of caloric balance, you know, I've been talking about this idea of energy in, energy out and caloric deficits. If you are in a caloric balance, what happens is at nighttime when you go to sleep, then you will start to burn off this fat to energize your immune system while you are asleep at night. The next morning you wake up and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That's somebody who's in weight maintenance. But if you are eating more sugar than your body can handle and you're making more fat than what your body needs, eventually you're gonna to start to get fatter and fatter. And let me just get a different color in. And, you know, we're going to get more and more 
sugar being stored here and what essentially we're going to get is inflammation so what happens is as these little fat cells start to grow and they start to push on each other they start to um, generate an inflammatory response and then what happens is the inflammatory response we get inflammation which is essentially triggering the immune system and that makes us more insulin resistant so that means that even if we're eating glucose, we can't store as much in the cells. So we have less being able to be stored in the cells, which means we get an increase going to the liver, which means that this process happens in a feed forward cycle. So essentially what we're doing is we have a, a dietary intake that starts out as a normal process. And, um, you know, starvation would have been one of the biggest threats to our survival, um, you know, many, many years ago. So we have this incredible process to take when we eat calories in excess and store it on our body for those times of need, for those times of famine, that's a normal process. But if we start to repeat that overconsumption day in, day out, day in, day out, we have a normal process that gets completely out of control, that creates an inflammatory response and essentially what we then get is we get disease because this elevation in inflammatory markers that's something that can imbalance our female hormones. Um, it's something that can create elevated cholesterol. It's something that can create type two diabetes. It's something that can feed into autoimmune conditions. So we have a normal physiological process, which has essentially gone a little bit bonkers. So what do we do about it? Well, the first thing here is to address this. Let me get a different color for you is to address this caloric balance. If we decrease how much glucose is going into the system, that's going to create an alleviation or a decrease on the pressure on all of this stuff that's going on. What we can also do is instead of sending these glucose molecules off to the liver, if we do some exercise, we're going to be draining the stores, which means we free up more space in our muscle cells to store more glucose. That also takes pressure off of the system. Um, so those are pretty much the main two things we can do. Create a caloric deficit. Create a caloric deficit by reducing carbohydrates specifically. And I'm not necessarily saying a low carbohydrate diet. I'm saying a lower carbohydrate diet. We are all on a bit of a spectrum here. So somebody who's this size versus somebody who's this size might need to have different carbohydrate intakes. You know, sometimes I do, very rarely, but sometimes I do put my clients on, you know, 50 grams of carbs a day. But sometimes I have clients who can easily have 200 grams, 250 grams of carbs a day, depending on what their activity levels are. And then I have clients who are all the way across that spectrum and really what that's about is working out what's right for you so we would we create an energy deficit and if you've watched previous videos of mine that's a 10 to 15 percent energy deficit is what i usually go for we make sure that we've got a nice balance of carbohydrates for that individual and a nice balance of you know proteins and fats as well good vegetables fiber and then we add exercise and that's for a lot of people it's really basic, but it can produce a really, really great response in terms of improving sensitivity and supporting weight loss. There's other things that we can address here as well. Um, so exercise if we're building muscle, our ability to store glucose goes up. We can also address this idea of inflammation. So for the most part, I think about 80% of my clients when, when they first work with me, they fill out a health check questionnaire and I go through that questionnaire and I look at what imbalances they might have and then we address those. And I probably say about 80% of the clients that I take on who complete that questionnaire, um, they, um, they, they have some sort of gut issues. So we know that by working on the gut, we can reduce inflammation. 
But we also know that we can reduce inflammation with certain foods, are your omega-3 fatty acids, lots of phytonutrients from your colorful fruits and vegetables. And then we've also got other things like fasting. So things like um, just eating two meals a day or doing intermittent fasting, so reducing meal frequency. So if you normally have your breakfast at, I don't know, like seven o'clock in the morning and then you have your evening meal at eight o'clock at night, you've got a 13 hour eating window. So it's really about how can we reduce that eating window. So at night time, we've got more opportunity for the body to deal with that. Or, you know, some, some of my clients, what I've been doing recently with one of my clients who's been a little bit weight loss resistant is keeping her calorie intake the same, but just um, separating it into two meals a day, which she has, and she has a third meal in the days when she exercises. But the main thing we want to do is actually really simple, which is then reduce the pressure on the system um, by increasing exercise, reducing carbohydrates, and um, creating a calorie deficit. And then maybe you can go on and look at some funky stuff like um, time-restricted feeding, reduced meal frequency. So a lot of nutritionists teach you know, eating five times a day or six times a day, I actually encourage my clients to eat three times a day and not to snack um, in between meals because that replicates a similar effect as fasting without being too intense on the person interrupting with their life too much. So I know that that's a lot. Ta -da! <laughs> that's a lot of drawing there. Um, but hopefully that's helped to iron out a little bit of the stuff with insulin resistance. Again, it's really not complicated stuff. Um, you, I think people, I always say nutrition can be both simple and complex. And yes, we can dive in and we can go deep into like mechanisms and nutrient deficiencies and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but it's only really worth going in deep once we've got the basic stuff under control. So everybody can kind of overcomplicate and overthink this, but you know, I just really wanna see that my clients are moving their bodies in the right way, um, consuming a good balance of calories, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, getting enough sleep, managing their stress, and, and loving their digestion, loving their digestive health. And when we do that, so much changes um, for them, and it, it really isn't as complicated as what a lot of people think that it needs to be. So um, that's that's me done. I fully appreciate that I know all of this stuff and I tend to talk really fast and go through it really fast. So um, if you do have any questions, if you need me to break anything down, then just holler. Um, otherwise, have an amazing Monday. Have an amazing week. I'm off to South Africa on Thursday, so I'm really excited about that. Um, have a great week and I will see you soon.